Hi, I'm Emily. Before I continue, please like and subscribe to follow my story of deceit and triumph. This is where it all began. The day was unusually overcast, matching my mood as I walked into the coffee shop. Linda, my stepmom, was already there, her face a poorly disguised mask of concern. Emily, I have some bad news, she began, her voice trembling just enough to seem sincere. Your father, he's in critical condition, but he doesn't want you to see him. He's worried it would upset you too much. I felt a pang of confusion and hurt. Dad and I were close, or so I thought. Why wouldn't he want to see me? I tried to mask my turmoil with a calm exterior. Why now, Linda? And why wouldn't he want to see his own daughter? She sighed, a practiced move. He's always been so protective of you. He didn't want his condition to cause you pain. The conversation felt rehearsed, but grief clouded my judgment. Over the next few days, I respected Dad's wishes. Or rather, what Linda told me were his wishes. Then, the final blow came. Emily, your father, he passed away last night. The words hit like a sledgehammer. Tears welled up, and I fought to keep my voice steady. And the will? Linda hesitated for a fraction of a second. He left everything to me. I'm sorry, Emily. Something didn't sit right with me, but grief was a heavy blanket, smothering my suspicions. At the funeral, I watched Linda play the part of the grieving widow flawlessly. People murmured their condolences, oblivious to the nagging doubts in my mind. A few days later, I was rummaging through Dad's old study, a place Linda hadn't touched yet. That's when I found it, a stack of letters Dad had written but never sent. His words jumped out at me, filled with distrust and concern over Linda's intentions. Linda's been acting strangely, one read. I'm worried about what she might do if something happens to me. That was the spark. My grief turned to resolve. I had to know the truth. I reached out to Mr. Howard, Dad's longtime lawyer. He agreed to meet me at his office. Emily, it's good to see you. Although, I wish it were under better circumstances. He greeted me, his eyes holding a sorrow that seemed genuine. Mr. Howard, I found these letters from my dad. He was worried about Linda. Was there anything unusual about the will? He shifted uncomfortably. Well, your father's will was quite clear. Everything was left to Linda. But I must admit, it was executed rather hastily. Hastily. That word echoed in my head. I needed more answers. Can I see the will, Mr. Howard? Please, I just need to understand. He hesitated, then opened his drawer and handed me a copy of the will. As I read through it, the legal jargon swam before my eyes. But one thing was clear. My father's signature didn't seem right. Mr. Howard, this signature, it doesn't look like Dad's. He sighed, running a hand through his hair. I had my doubts too, Emily. But without proof. Proof. That's what I needed. Thank you, Mr. Howard. I know what I need to do now. I left his office with a new purpose. Linda had played her part well, but the act was over. It was time for her final curtain call, and I was going to be the one to draw it. My journey for truth and justice had just begun. Infiltrating the crumbling empire my father once proudly built, I knew I had to act fast. Linda's grip on the company was like a vice, tightening with every passing day. I started with Mr. Jacobs, meeting him at a quaint, out-of-the-way diner, where the coffee was strong and the eavesdroppers scarce. Miss Emily, Mr. Jacobs greeted, his eyes a mix of sadness and resolve. I've seen your father build that company from scratch. It's heartbreaking to see what's happening. Thank you, Mr. Jacobs. Tell me everything. What's Linda's game plan here? I urged, my notebook ready. He sighed, stirring his coffee slowly. It started with the layoffs. Longtime employees, gone. Then she began selling assets, crucial parts of the business. It's like she's deliberately running it into the ground. My heart sank with each revelation. And the staff? What do they think? They're scared, Emily. Scared to speak up. Scared to lose their jobs. There's this aura of fear she's cultivated, he replied, his voice dropping to a whisper. I thanked Mr. Jacobs and promised to keep him updated. But I needed more. Something concrete. That's where Detective Rivera came in. Detective Rivera was a no-nonsense woman, her eyes sharp and assessing. We sat in my living room, a stark contrast to her rugged appearance. Miss Rivera... I need to find out the truth about my father's will and the company's finances, 
I stated firmly. She nodded, her pen poised over her notepad. I'll start by digging into the company's financials. If Linda is siphoning funds or engaging in illegal activities, I'll find out. And the will? Can we prove it was forged? I asked, my hands clenched in my lap. It won't be easy, but I have contacts. Forensic analysts who can compare signatures. We'll get to the bottom of this, she assured, her confidence infectious. Days turned into nights as I waited anxiously for any news. Finally, Detective Rivera called with an update that sent chills down my spine. Emily, the company's financials are a mess. Large sums have been transferred to unknown offshore accounts, and I have reason to believe Linda is planning to flee the country, she revealed. And the will? I asked, holding my breath. The signature. It's not your father's. We've compared it with known samples. It's a forgery, Emily. You were right all along. The pieces of the puzzle were falling into place, but with each discovery, the weight of Linda's betrayal grew heavier. She had not only deceived me, but had disrespected my father's legacy, turning his life's work into a mere pawn in her greedy game. Armed with this new information, I knew what I had to do next. The time for playing defense was over. It was time to take the fight to Linda, to expose her deceit and greed. This was more than just a battle for justice. It was a war to preserve my father's legacy. Linda had made a grave mistake underestimating me, and I was about to show her just how costly that mistake would be. The plan was intricate, requiring precision and a bit of theatrical flair. Detective Rivera and I holed up in my apartment, poring over legal documents and brainstorming our strategy. We need to make Linda believe she has the upper hand until we spring the trap, Detective Rivera explained, her eyes scanning over the papers. I nodded, my mind racing. So, we file a lawsuit claiming a part of the inheritance, forcing her to produce the original will? Exactly. And that's when we introduce our ace, Rivera said, a sly smile playing on her lips. Enter the expertly forged will, a replica so close to my father's handwriting it could fool anyone. We needed to cast enough doubt on Linda's version to swing the investigation in our favor. I contacted Mr. Howard, who was initially hesitant, but agreed to play his part in the legal drama. Emily, this is risky. If we're caught fabricating evidence... We won't be, I assured him. We just need to cast enough doubt. The day of the hearing, the courtroom was tense. Linda sat confidently, her lawyer smirking beside her. I could feel their smugness from across the room. When it was our turn... Mr. Howard presented our version of the will. Your Honor, we have reason to believe that the will presented by the defendant is fraudulent. This, he said, holding up our document, is the true last testament of Mr. Roberts. Linda's lawyer laughed. This is preposterous. Mrs. Roberts has already provided the legitimate will. But the judge was intrigued. Let's have a handwriting expert examine both. The expert, a gray-haired man with keen eyes, took his time examining both documents. The courtroom was silent, the tension palpable. Finally, he looked up. The will provided by Mrs. Roberts. There are discrepancies in the handwriting. It doesn't match Mr. Roberts's known samples. Linda's face drained of color, her confident demeanor crumbling. And the other document? The judge asked. It's more consistent with Mr. Roberts's handwriting, but I cannot conclusively verify it without further analysis, the expert admitted. It was enough. Doubt had been cast on Linda's version of the will, and the judge ordered a full investigation. As we left the courtroom, Linda's eyes met mine, a flash of realization crossing her features. She knew the game had changed, and I was no longer the grieving daughter she could easily dismiss. I walked out of the courthouse, my heart racing, but my steps steady. The trap was set, and Linda had taken the bait. Now it was only a matter of time before her web of lies unraveled, revealing the truth for all to see. This was more than just a legal battle. It was a fight for justice, for my father's memory. And I was not going to lose. The final court hearing was a crescendo of revelations and justice served. The evidence against Linda was overwhelming, unraveling her web of lies in front of a packed courtroom. It was Detective Rivera who delivered the most shocking news. Your Honor, we have evidence to prove that Mr. Roberts is, in fact, alive. Linda had him placed in a private care facility, under heavy sedation to render him near comatose. Gasps echoed through the courtroom as Linda's facade finally shattered. Her eyes, once full of deceitful confidence, now showed nothing but fear. The judge was stern and swift in his judgment. 
Linda was found guilty of fraud, manipulation, and a slew of other charges. She was led away in handcuffs, her head bowed in defeat. But the true victory came later, in a quiet, sunlit room of a care facility where my father lay. It was a surreal moment, seeing him there, alive but frail. Dad? My voice was barely a whisper, a mixture of hope and disbelief. His eyes fluttered open, focusing on me with effort. Emily, he murmured, his voice weak but filled with emotion. Tears streamed down my face as I took his hand. I'm here, Dad. You're safe now. His recovery was slow but steady. With each passing day, he regained a bit more of his strength, his mind clearing from the fog Linda had kept him in. Meanwhile, I took the reins of the company, determined to restore it to its former glory. It wasn't easy. Linda had left a tangled mess in her wake. But with Mr. Howard's legal guidance and the support of loyal employees like Mr. Jacobs, we began to turn things around. As I sat in my father's old office, now mine, I couldn't help but reflect on the journey that brought me here. It was a path paved with deceit and pain, but also resilience and truth. I learned that seeking justice wasn't just about righting wrongs. It was about honoring the legacy of those we loved and lost. My father's company was more than just a business. It was a testament to his life's work, his values. And now, it was a symbol of our victory against those who tried to tarnish it. In the end, the battle against Linda was more than just legal warfare. It was a fight for my father's legacy, for justice, and for the truth. And as I looked out the window of the office, the cityscape sprawling before me, I knew this was just the beginning. I had fought against the odds and emerged victorious, but this journey was more than just mine. It was a story of a daughter's love, a fight for justice, and a testament to the enduring power of truth. As my father slowly recovered and the company began to flourish once more, I realized that this experience had changed me. I was no longer just Emily. I was a guardian of my father's legacy, a warrior of justice, and a beacon of hope for those who thought they had no voice against the powerful and deceitful. Linda's downfall was a message to all that deceit and manipulation would never triumph over the truth. And as for me, I had emerged not just unscathed, but stronger, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead with the same determination and resilience that had brought me this far. This was not the end of my story, but the beginning of a new chapter, one filled with promise, hope, and the unwavering pursuit of what is right. And that, my friends, marks the end of our gripping tale. But before you go, I have a question that I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on. If you were in Emily's shoes, would you have forgiven Linda after discovering the truth about your father? Or do you believe some actions are simply unforgivable? This story walked a fine line between justice and vengeance, and I'd love to know how you would navigate such a complex moral dilemma. Your opinions matter, so please, don't hesitate to share them in the comments below. And hey, if you enjoyed this journey of suspense and resilience, show some love by hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel. Stay tuned for more stories that challenge, inspire, and captivate. Your support keeps these stories alive, and together we can continue to explore the depths of human emotion and justice. Thanks for watching, and I can't wait to read your thoughts in the comments.